<laughs> Hi, this is Paul Freitz, and welcome to Halloween DIY and How To. In this edition, I am going to show you how to create this ghostly moving hand shadow. You may have seen this effect a time or two in this iconic dark ride. This ominous animated hand shadow would be a great addition to your Halloween display or even in your very own haunted mansion. How is it done? Well, I'm going to show you how, so let's get started. How this lighting effect was originally achieved is actually quite simple, but there are some pitfalls. I will be providing some tips and tricks that will help you to avoid those. Having said that, here are some of the items that you will need to create this prop. The two crucial components to this visual effects prop are the rotating motor and the light source. For the motor, you will need a slow rotating motor that has a speed between 3 to 5 revolutions per minute. The one I'm using rotates at about 3 RPMs. Be careful, many motors may look similar but rotate far too quickly. Using those will result in a hand shadow that will speed past in a blur. Additionally, this motor is battery operated, has a simple compact design, a convenient on-off switch, and its rotating direction can be easily reversed just by flipping the direction of the battery. I have listed in the description to this video where you can purchase this motor. Now for the light source. Since there is no focusing mechanism to create a crisp, clear shadow, the light source you use is crucial. Some lights will give you an out-of-focus shadow, others will give you multiple outlines, and some produce a distracting hotspot. To avoid these, my suggestion is to look for a clear, incandescent bulb with a single filament. Replacement appliance bulbs and automobile bulbs are a great resource for these and are readily available. The drawback is that these bulbs need their own size and style of base. For example, this appliance bulb needs an intermediate base. In this video, I will be using this low voltage bulb found in auto parts and hardware stores. Although finding its base may be inconvenient, its low voltage means that the electrical wiring is much safer to do, and speaking of safety, the bulb puts out less heat. The other items that you will need are a short section of 3 inch ABS pipe. The 3 inches denotes its inside dimension or ID. You will need a section between 5 to 6 inches in length. A corresponding 3 inch ABS snap-in drain. Look for the type that has a drain pattern with a center opening. It should fit snugly into the 3 inch ABS pipe. One pre-wired single contact bayonet base socket with a two hole mounting flange. Keep in mind that the single contact point socket is for a single filament bulb. The double contact point socket is for a two filament bulb. You do not want to use that one. One low voltage clear glass single filament auto parts replacement bulb. It should be in the 12 volts range and its wattage should be in the mid 20s. Instead of screw threads on its base, it has two small pins on its side for a push and twist connection to the bayonet base socket. It will have a single contact point on the bottom of its base. A bulb with two contact points on its base denotes two filaments. You do not want that one. To power the low voltage bulb, you will need a small transformer. I find these in abundance at thrift stores and they are very inexpensive. Look for one with an output in the 12 volts range to match the bulb's voltage. A different voltage output, either too high or too low, will adversely affect the bulb's function and life. Two hose clamps, sometimes called ring clamps, 
one large between four and four and one half inches in diameter, and one small between two and two and one half inches in diameter. One one half beveled washer with an outside dimension of three quarters of an inch. Look for one with the smallest center hole. One hand clamp. This will be attached to the ABS pipe and different types will work. Electrical tape. Either one brass paper fastener with legs in the one inch range or two very small zip ties. One small craft or popsicle stick. It should measure around four and one half inches long by around three eighths of an inch wide. A white charcoal or grease pencil. This will come in handy when drawing on a black surface. Two machine screws with corresponding washer and nut and one longer machine screw with corresponding lock washer and wing nut. I am using the type of wing nut with a nylon insert that will help to prevent it from loosening. I will provide more information on these machine screws a bit later. To cast the shadow, you will need to cut out hand silhouettes from either a craft foam sheet or plastic craft sheet. I am using this thin black plastic lawn sign that was found in the party section of a hobby store. It should be thin enough to cut with a utility scissors or knife, yet stiff enough to hold its shape. You will need a pattern for the hand silhouette. I will go into more detail on that later in this video. And a transparent gel in the color of your choice. This is optional and used only if you wish to change the color of the light. These are professional gels used for film, video, and stage lighting. Let's start assembling this apparatus. First, we need to attach a clamp of your choice to the ABS pipe. Choose a machine screw that is long enough to go through both the pipe and the clamp that you will be using. Using a drill bit that is slightly larger in diameter than the machine screw, drill a hole one and a half to two inches from one end of the ABS pipe. You may also need to drill a hole into your clamp. Feed the lock washer onto the machine screw and from inside the pipe, feed the screw through the hole so that its head and the lock washer are in the inside. Feed the screw's end through the hole in the clamp and attach with the wing nut. You may need to add a washer or spacer prior to screwing on the wing nut. Tighten the wing nut only finger tight so that the pipe is firmly attached to the clamp, but also allows you to pivot the pipe. This will give you some flexibility when pointing the hand shadow into your desired direction. You can really get fancy by using a cell phone holder that has a ball joint with a set ring attached in between the pipe section and your clamp. This will give you far more flexibility to position the hand shadow and the ability to lock it in position by tightening the set ring around the ball joint. However, for the purpose of this video, we are going to keep it simple by just using the hand clamp. Next, let's prep the motor and get it ready to attach to the ABS pipe. With the motor turned off or the battery removed, carefully remove the wire hanger from the motor's end and the key ring from its rotating shaft. Once the key ring is removed, slide the washer broad flat side out over the shaft. If the fit is loose, wrap a short piece of tape around the shaft making sure to leave a small gap where the shaft meets the motor. Twisting the end of the tape into a point will help when slipping the washer over the shaft. You should have a snug fit. If the fit is too tight, remove some of the tape. Cut the excess tape flush to the washer's surface. When done, it should look like this, with nothing protruding beyond the washer and with the tape's edge slightly away from where the shaft meets the motor. To attach the motor to the ABS pipe, we will be using the two hose clamps. First, we need to join the two together. You can either use two small zip ties or use the brass paper fastener. I'm using the paper fastener. Piggyback the hose clamps and starting with the large clamp, slip the ends of the fastener through the slots on the two clamps. 
Flare out the two legs of the fastener to join the two clamps together, much like a rivet. With the two clamps firmly attached to each other, slip the end of the motor into the smaller clamp and loosely tighten. Then slip the larger clamp over the free end of the pipe and loosely tighten it as well. Make sure that the on-off switch on the motor is facing up, the part of the motor's housing is sitting on the ABS pipe, that you have easy access to the motor's battery, that nothing is obstructing the side-to-side -side movement of the pipe on the clamp, and that all the components are aligned straight up and down. After that, fully tighten the two hose clamps, locking everything in place. We are now ready to attach the light bulb to the drain piece. From the inside of the ABS drain, feed the wires on the socket base through the center hole of the ABS drain. Attach the mounting flange onto the drain by using two short machine screws that fit through the holes on the flange and are long enough to go through both the socket base and the thickness of the drain. Then slip a washer over the ends of the screws followed by a nut. Tightening the nuts will secure the socket base to the inside of the drain. To attach the two wire ends to the unplugged transformer, there are three options. After exposing the copper wire at the ends, the easiest option is to tape one wire end to the outside of the transformer's barrel connector and one to its inside with electrical tape. Or, Cut off that barrel connector and after separating the wires for an inch or two, carefully strip the insulation off the ends. Pair up the wire with the white marking or stripe to the white wire and the black to the black wire. Then either connect the paired wires with very small wire nuts or use a type of crimp connector known as a butt splice connector to connect the paired wires together. Plug in the low voltage transformer and insert the bulb to test it. Then slide the drain into the end of the pipe. Do not glue it. It should be a tight fit and will stay in place. This will allow you to easily remove it to change the bulb. Even though these are low voltage bulbs, they still get hot. The holes in the drain cap will allow for airflow, keeping the heat from the bulb from building up inside the ABS pipe. We are now ready to tackle the hand silhouettes cut out of a craft sheet that will create the shadow. You can create your own hand silhouette or use this one for a guide. To transfer the pattern, draw a one half inch grid pattern that is five inches by two inches on the craft sheet. Then using this pattern as a guide, draw the hand and arms outline onto each corresponding square. Feel free to simplify the drawing, but keep the general proportions of the finger's hand and arm. Using a utility knife or scissors, cut out the hand silhouette. Once you have the first one cut out, use it as a template to trace around for additional silhouettes. You can create either a two, three, or four hand silhouette. The more hands, the more frequently the hand shadow will appear. For the purpose of this video, I will be creating a two-hand silhouette to cast the shadow. Once the silhouettes are cut out, find center on the craft stick and then, starting from that center, glue the hand silhouettes onto it. I am using glue dots just in case I should need to make adjustments. Make sure that both hand silhouettes are facing in the same direction and that both are facing in the direction of the motor's rotation. Once done, glue the center back side of the craft stick onto the broad, flat end of the washer, like this. Your hand shadow apparatus is now ready to be clamped into position. I am lighting my set from above with the apparatus about five to six feet away from the wall. The closer the apparatus to what you are projecting on, the smaller the shadow will be. And the further away the apparatus is, the larger the shadow. However, you will start to lose some definition. To change the color of the light, 
loosely hang a color gel at the open end of the ABS pipe using a piece of clear tape. Keeping the gel loosely attached will allow the hot air from the bulb to escape. To change the light beam's edge even more, you can tape a strip of aluminum foil or aluminum foil tape around the open end of the ABS pipe. You can then manipulate the foil to create different edges to the light beam. To hide the apparatus from view, hang a large piece of black craft foam or black foam core board in front of it. Be sure to keep it slightly away from the apparatus as to not interfere with the rotating hands. With this lighting effects prop in place, motor and light source turned on, and the set fully dressed, we are now ready for some spooky magic by turning off the lights. Happy Halloween.